think this is the only way that we can think of to address uh, uh, chronic traffic issues in, in major cities. But almost every major city, and LA is, I mean, arguably the worst, but certainly among the worst <laughs> um, uh, in traffic. In fact, uh, one reason we were late was we're stuck in the damn 405. <laughs> I mean, that is like, yeah. <laughs> um, but everyone's, you know, it, it, almost, almost every city in the world has severe traffic issues. And there, there really don't seem to be solutions that um, are anywhere uh, around the corner, or like even that might work that I'm, that I'm aware of. And I've been living in LA since 2002. In 16 years, it's like the 405 has gone, it varied between like, like the seventh and eighth level of hell. It's like, <laughs> sometimes seven, sometimes eight. Um, it, it is not improved. It's, and yeah, yeah. The, exactly. The yeah. point is that it's just, it's just not improved over all that time. Yeah. And um, so, it, now we're not suggesting that this is, like, it's, it's the way that we think is probably the best way to solve the problem, but there may be ideas that others have. Um, we're not suggesting this to the exclusion of, of other approaches, um, but it's the one that we think could work um, and is worth trying. Um, and. Um, yeah, so we'll, t we'll t tell you how, how we're going, how, how we're doing it. Um, so this is there's the problem. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we're going to start with the problem statement. <laughs> Soul destroying traffic. <laughs> you know, there's a few ways to skin this cat. I don't think this is, pro the, like the problem with this is that uh, there will be like zillions of these things flying all over the place. and. Um, you know, inevitably somebody's not going to service their car properly, and they're going to drop a hubcap, um, and it's, it's going to guillotine somebody. Um, so, and, and it's going to be noisy with a lot of, it's like, I feel like a, like a hurricane. I mean, can you imagine how much Air Force a little drone has, like one of the little, little drones? And, and these would just be huge by comparison. Um, and so I think this is a, you know, Maybe that I actually don't you know any way to make the physics of this work just because of the sheer amount of wind force that has to, has to occur in order to lift it, something that's carrying a, a person. Um, like you, you, you really can't even fly the quietest helicopter you know, through neighborhoods without bothering people. So I, I, I think it's really hard to imagine going 3D up. So that if you can't go 3D up, or if it's unlikely that you can go 3D up, then what about going 3D down? That's the that's, that's the other direction. And um, you can go to very many levels down. So you could, you could, you could in theory, you could have like hundreds of levels of tunnel. Um, and arbitrarily solve any level of traffic. So the, 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 you know, we often get this question of induced demand. Um, like if you, if, you, if you add a tunnel or some new transport system, will demand then not just increase and we'll be back where we started. Uh, if you look at, say, the 405, you add a, you add a lane to the 405, you, you go through, like, definitely, like, in the worst level of hell, while the lane's being constructed, and then, like, when it's finished, it seems like uh, it was, like, hardly different. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the, but the thing is that what, what's actually happening with these, with, with highways, is that the, the highways are at the actual outer limit of, of their capacity. Um, and, and you're really just on, barely moving the needle in, in capacity. But for tunnels, you could have hundreds of lanes. Um, and uh, the, there's no real limit. In fact, like the, the fundamental issue that we face is that um, so much of our life is 3D. You're in a tall building um, or, or in, a, in a dense uh, office environment. And, and then we go to this 2D plane of, of streets. And the, the, result, the consequences are obvious. You're, going from a, you're like losing an entire dimension. And everyone wants to go to, to and from the buildings at the same time. You know, we sort of want to arrive at work at the same time and then leave at around the same time. So then, the, 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 obviously, you're going to get stuck in traffic. This is guaranteed. Um, but if you can do um, hundreds of tunnels and you can have many small stations woven throughout the fabric of a city, uh, you, you can actually, without even the city even appearing different, uh, you, you, could, um, you, you could solve the, the transport problem. 
because one of the, the other issues with, say, um, a, a subway tunnel, and by the way, I don't, I'm not against subways, it's just that, that it's just one of the challenges with subways is that when you've got very large stations, um, then you're going to put a, a lot of people will need to go to the station, come from the station, and it creates a lot of congestion around that station. Um, you have to reserve real estate for the station, and uh, it, it's, it's very difficult to, to weave large stations into the fabric of a city. But if you have many small stations that are not much larger than a parking space, then you could have, you, you could really seamlessly integrate a new transport network into, in, into a city. Um, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't affect things in a bad way. Um, and, and it has, it, it's, it's uh, compared to an above ground system or like compared to a flying car, you don't have to worry about bad weather. Um, you, you can't see it, hear it, feel it. You're, you're not dividing communities with lanes. And we think we can make this really fun. Steve was like, yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. These, um, you're right. You have you have to stay three-dimensional. Flying cars are, they don't reduce anxiety. Um, right. They don't really exist. While tunnels do exist and are very buildable, yeah. and it's all about building them better. Yeah, I mean the, the thought experiment with flying cars, like you say, a helicopter with wheels. You know? mm -hmm. Could always add, add wheels to a helicopter. But, um, anyway, but so the, the keys are, are we going to figure out how to um, tunnel. Uh, fast, uh, safely, and at a cost that's not crazy. Um, can, can I have the cool speed facts for the, the snails and just uh, show yeah, them? Yeah, show exactly. which... This is our little friend, little chum Gary. <laughs> the um, snail. <laughs> the company mascot. Um, yeah. Yeah, so just like the order of magnitude. I mean, a human walking speed is approximately two to three miles an hour. Uh, the fastest boring machine uh, in the world is about 0 0.003 miles an hour. Um, and a snail is about 0 0.03 miles an hour. So you have the boring machine, which is 10 times slower than the snail, which is 100 times slower than a human. So what Elon has challenged the company to do is at least beat the snail. Um, yeah. And so hence, hence our mascot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's not like this tunnel is going to be ripping through the neighborhoods. <laughs> It'll be like, you know, uh, like a fish called Wanda, yeah. like with a, you know, I don't know, like it's, that it's, scene with the steamroller. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, watch out, the tunnel's coming. It's just a crazy image slow. that if you take this and you put it on the ground and you have a boring machine, this thing will like pull ahead in a time lapse. It's like ten times faster. Yeah, yeah. it's um, terrible. Anyway, so we do want to be faster than a snail, um, which is way harder than it sounds. Um, and then, um, ultimately, if we could, uh, like the dream would be to be maybe one tenth walking speed, um, uh, which would be, you know, if we could be 0.3 miles an hour, that would be, wow, you know, um, but, yeah, then, then you could get a mile done every, you know, 3.3 .3 hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be LA to San Fran in like a few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. But just still like one tenth walking speed. So yeah, still in like, like you definitely run away. You, 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 you could yeah. crawl away with it from it with one arm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like pretty, snake. not scary. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you um, want to talk about some of the yeah. ways we're doing it. So some of the key things to make it go faster, you, you got to do continuous mining. So you got to uh, drill continuously, um, and and then put in the uh, reinforcing segments while you're drilling. So typically, what ha or what happens right now is that. Uh, you drill for a bit and then stop, and then you, and you put in all the reinforcing segments. And that takes ages. In fact, it takes way longer to put in the reinforcing segments than it even takes to tunnel. So if we can just dig continuously and put in the reinforcing segments at the same time, uh, that would be at really more than a doubling of speed, maybe a tripling or quadrupling of speed. Um, for the in-house design for the boring machine, we've tripled the tunnel boring machine power, so it has three times as much power. Um, we have, a, I mean, these are like a lot of things, these are, this is really not like brain surgery or rock and science, something like that. Um, so uh, we're using like really first rate engineering talent to solve problems that I think are pretty straightforward. Um, like one of the biggest challenges is how do you get all the dirt out? Um, and it's, it's really quite laborious to get the dirt out normally. So we're just, we've figured out designs to remove the dirt quickly, uh, automate segment erection. Um, and um, yeah, just in general, go, go faster. 
Um, a lot of the, the time that's required for these boring machines is, is um, for laying tracks and for um, like really long power lines. So you, you can figure if you're like a mile long uh, tunnel or two mile long tunnel, you need like a couple of miles of high voltage cable, which is really big heavy cable. Because uh, the, the boring machines are, themselves are all electrically powered. Um, but, but having two miles of high voltage cable is pretty expensive and you've got to keep laying out more cable. We want to make this more like a cordless drill. Um, so it'll, it'll be using, you know, like Tesla battery packs and whatever to, to drill. And then it can just, it can drill without you having to have this crazy cable behind it. Um, yeah, and the, uh, and the tiny things, while it's lighthearted, is actually not it's actually rare in the United States. There's one school that specializes in mining, but in general, uh, there's almost zero R&D in tunnels in America. Most of it's either in Japan or, or in Europe. So it's really trying new things has actually been very helpful for us. There we go. Oh, this is our made an electric uh, locomotive. So um, we think this is the the biggest electric, uh, battery-powered locomotive to be precise. So electric uh, battery-powered loc locomotive. It's actually just using um, some Model 3 motors and batteries uh, to haul the rail muck cars. Um, are those like 250,000 pounds or something? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like a quarter million pounds of, of muck on, of dirt on the uh, rail cars. Pulled by two electric motors and a battery pack. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, the other tunnels at, at scale all use a diesel locomotive in a tunnel, which is kind of a crazy thing to do. They have all these diesel fumes, um, and it's dangerous and smelly, and uh, you have poisonous fumes. But um, like it's, it's kind of a silly thing. But we're, we think we're probably the first to use a a battery uh, electric a locomotive of that size. Of that size, yeah. And if you ever see the pictures, you can kind of see it over up there, that enormous ventilation duct at the top. It's a three-inch ventilation pipe, and it's solely there for when we, before we made the electric Loki for the diesel Loki. You have this gigantic ventilation pipe, and the second yeah. you went to electric, you, you barely need that, which is, which is great. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the vertical integration, we were um, creating our own concrete segments. Um, and we're creating, creating them on site using dirt that we dug out of the ground, which, again, like, may seem like an obvious thing, but um, this is almost never done. Or we're not aware of a case where the concrete segments, the reinforcing segments, actually use dirt front that are, that's like dug out of the hole. Um, it's typically um, using some um, construction company far away, and then they bring in the, construct in the concrete segments. But we actually just make the concrete segments on site at the start of the tunnel. Um, and then we were making bricks out of the dirt. Um, and th th these are bricks that are made by compressing the dirt at, at extremely high pressures, um, adding a little bit of just a small amount of concrete. Um, and you can have bricks that are uh, rated for California seismic loads. Um, and then these bricks, um, we actually think we can sort of sell the bricks for like 10 cents a brick or something like that. Um, <laughs> And uh, they're really great bricks. <laughs> um, they're like, they're like build houses with them and things. Uh, so uh, these are like way better than like way better than cinder block because cinder block's kind of not that strong and kind of rough and grainy. Um, these are uh, super strong. Um, they're, they're more like uh, you know I don't know what like. What the smooth. material? They're, they're, they're incredibly smooth. smooth yeah, yeah. There's, like there's not really like there's not really good analog for for these because these are bricks that are way better than any bricks I've ever seen at a construction site. Yeah. Um, that they're like capable of taking extremely high loads. Yeah. Um, and they're made at like 5,000 psi or something. Yeah, no, they they have higher compressive yeah. strength than, than concrete, and we can you can always just keep pumping it up more just yeah. in the machine. Yeah, so higher compressive strength than concrete, and um, and then we're, we're going to do some fun things like um, make life-size Lego kits uh, with um, where you can like order a set and like build you know anything. Like, well, I think we were like thinking of starting with the Egyptian pantheon, um, and uh, so you, could, like, you, you told us to, you told us to build a pyramid or build a uh, pyramid and a yeah. temple for you. Cool, yeah. temple of Horus. Okay, <laughs> so 
Well, like, start with the Temple of Horus uh, yeah. pyramid and uh, the Sphinx. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and a few other things. <laughs> and um, and then if you want, you can sort of order the kit and and kind of build this in your backyard. <laughs> um, and it seems like a fun way to spend an afternoon. Uh, and um, yeah, so so then like if we can actually take the dirt from the tunnel and instead of just dumping it somewhere, we can turn it into something useful um, that can be used for for fun or for real buildings. Um, and um, you know, uh, I think this this could be you know for affordable housing like really compelling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, personalized mass transit, and you have. Uh, Unlike a traditional subway, you have a highway system and a kind of like a series of off ramps. So, when um, when you're going through the the, the, the tunnel network, you would you would enter the main arteries and and then automatically transition from one artery to another, and then uh, then eventually go out through uh, one of the little sort of micro stations, if you will, or mini stations, um, and. Uh, uh, it, you would be going very fast the whole the whole time, and the only time you'd actually stop would be when you when you exit. And think about it, say a subway um, or a bus is that you, particularly a subway. The subways uh, usually stop at every station. You might occasionally have an express, but obviously one subway train can't go past another subway train. It's very difficult. Um, and um, and so the, a subway ends up being like a series of stop streets, um, whereas this system. Uh, is designed to be more like you have a highway and a bunch of um, off ramps and, and loops connecting to the highway, um, kind of like kind of like cars. It's sort of like almost like an autonomous underground, multi-level car system. Yeah, that costs a dollar. That costs a dollar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we think we, we can probably just charge about a dollar a ticket or something like that. A typical bus ticket, I think, average price bus bus ticket is about two dollars. So it's like less than a bus ticket. Yeah, and just uh, in Los Angeles, I mean, if you kind of just do it out with the, the routes, it would be like downtown Los Angeles to uh, a specific terminal in LAX in about eight minutes, which would be which would be wonderful. Um, and, and that's and what's kind of neat about it, it's not just downtown LA to LAX, it's downtown, because the station is going to be small, yeah. it's downtown LA to LAX Terminal 1, LAX Terminal 2, and you would go directly there is the entire, is the entire concept. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of just wrap like packets on a network, and like it's sort of like the internet, kind of like the way the internet works. The packet would like you sort of end up wherever you want to be. And, like you'd, you'd, the, the entrance would be very close to where you want it to be, and the, and the exit would be very close to where you want it to be. Because instead of having dozens of stations, you'd have um, hundreds and possibly thousands over time. So it means the granularity of each station is, is much finer and. Um, people can be dropped off really within a few blocks of where they need to go. Yeah, I and mean, each side tunnel itself could have a bunch of side tunnels, so you yeah. literally, I mean, in the extreme, you could have a station in everyone's driveway. That's, yeah, that's, a, that's, that's sort of in the limit, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, um, we should start the, oh, 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 right. oh, oh, and then, so, then going, now, going between cities, uh, You'd want to evacuate the the air and have a pressurized pod. Now, what we're talking about doing here in LA is not not the hyperloop, but the, we're talking about a loop. So we're trying to distinguish loop versus hyperloop. Hyperloop would be where we draw a vacuum on the tunnel, have a pressurized pod, and and go very fast. And this would be good for long distances, uh, say going from LA to San Francisco. Um, you know, for going from uh, Washington D.C. to New York. Um, that kind of thing, um, and, and and so hyperloop would connect to a loop, um, and you'd, you'd have a sort of smooth transition. Um, yeah. Do you, do you want to give the warning about the, the video? <laughs> oh, uh, um, the, the next video. Uh, if you uh, are subject to seizures, I would <laughs> not look at this. <laughs>
So, so that was a video of, of a test pod ride that we did in, on, in the Hyperloop tunnel. So we have like a roughly 0.8 mile um, vacuum tube at uh, just uh, by SpaceX. Um, it's about uh, five or six feet in diameter. And, um, and, and we've um, been able to go a couple hundred miles an hour. Uh, uh, and we think probably we're aiming for, for around three, uh, to go over 300 miles an hour, but accelerate all the way 300 miles an hour and break. Um, and that's in a, in a vacuum tunnel. Um, so it's, it's really just sort of refining the technology necessary for um, ultra high speed transport from um, city to city. And um, yeah, it's kind of, kind of fun. We can go faster than a, than a jet. Like there's the, you don't really have um, uh, sort of uh, mock problems. You know, you know, like uh, you're not sort of creating like massive sonic booms because uh, you evacuated the air. There's no upper limit based on physics. It's just yeah. how straight is the tunnel to make the ride right. comfortable. Exactly. Yeah. It's essentially constrained by the G loading that would be comfortable for a person in the tunnel. And and one of the wonderful events that that Elon. Uh, puts on at, at SpaceX and the Boring Company is a, a Hyperloop competition, which uh, we do every year. And uh, the first year, um, actually, this is, this is true, over 1,000 universities worldwide entered, which was amazing. And then we narrowed it down to 20, and then 20 came and actually competed at SpaceX. Uh, fastest pod wins. And last year, uh, a team won at 202 miles an hour. That's a student team building a pod in nine months. So it yeah. shows the tech is, is very doable. Yeah. yeah. Like so, and this is all running in, in a vacuum tube. Yeah. So, um, and uh, while Steve, uh, sort of, the credit, by the way, for the Hyperloop uh, competition, really, this, Steve deserves the credit. He, Steve really <laughs> is the guy who made that competition happen and uh, who runs it. So, <laughs> thank you for doing that. Thank, thanks for letting us do it. <laughs> All right, so what we're aiming for with this tunnel is um, a, a north-south tunnel uh, parallel to the 405. And it's, it's really intended to, to learn more about what it takes to build a, a tunnel on the, the sort of north-south uh, geology of Los Angeles. Los Angeles is like, uh, like New York is for like plays. Uh, if, if you can build a tunnel, because we've got seismic, we've got... Um, Um, you've got the water table, you've got uh, like very complicated um, and, um, and utilities everywhere. Yeah, utilities everywhere. So it's, it's a very very complex thing. Um, and we, now we have an east-west tunnel that's uh, almost completed in uh, Hawthorne that's parallel to the 105. So we have an east-west uh, uh, kind of research or test tunnel, and we think it would be good to have a north-south one as well. So we're going to have a good cross-section of the geology uh, in LA. And then uh, besides building the tunnel itself, we want us to see what the user experience is going to be like and what the public would prefer uh, the tunnel operation to be like. So if just It's not like we said, oh, we want an exemption. No, what you, you do in an initial study, and an initial study determines your next steps. And so, I mean, like, like we were talking about, Literally, there, there's no environmental impact. And so we did this 1,500-page study, submitted the study, and then the city of LA determined that uh, an exemption was appropriate. Um, but the main thing is, it's not being done to be controversial. It was the result of the study. And, and we're always going to do the right thing. We're always going to do, and so we'll, we'll keep working with the city and, and, and kind of go with that. Um, but yeah, there are an enormous amount of permits. And then for a larger system, I mean, to be frank, we, we don't right now know what that system would be because we need such an enormous amount of community feedback and to know, because Elon's always very clear with me and the team, we must do the most useful, helpful thing possible. And I don't think we yet know what that correct alignment, the alignment is yet, and we can't wait to get feedback on what it is. And then, yeah, then we go f through a full EIR and, and, and go for it. But right now, you know, the goal is really that test tunnel. And, and then w with the Metro, um, the Metro has been wonderful, and our goal is to complement the Metro as much as possible. One thing we do talk about is, um, you know, and this is just us, is that, you know, the Purple Line's amazing, the Expo Line's amazing. Um, it would be neat to connect them. Uh, Two-minute trip, which, which would be really, really interesting. And so, just thanks to the Metro for their support. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I want to feel like we're, 
I'll just reinforce what, uh, what Steve is saying. Um, we want to connect with um, and, and, and uh, supplement existing transport systems. Um, so if we do things like help connect uh, to subway lines in LA, that would be that'd be great. Um, if obviously having a sort of like many stations come out uh, at subway stations, at bus stops, at uh, you know, LAX and um, Dodger Stadium and various other places, um, that's going to make 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 a lot of sense. Um, we're trying to maximize the usefulness of this system um, while having it not be a, um, not not affect people's lives as it gets created. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty I great. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> so we think these, t these times are actually real, um, which is pretty cool. And, uh, and, and, and this is, the, what you're seeing there is just like in, in, a, in a kind of an example network. Uh, ultimately, it would probably be something different from this exact uh, diagram, and probably be um, far more widespread. Maybe like really all over, all over, all over the greater LA area. Um, and um, yeah, so but because of the nature of, of tunnels, as I was saying, you can, as you reach capacity on on one tunnel, you can simply put another tunnel underneath it, and then keep going. Um, and I mean, if you want to have 100 levels deep, you could do 100 levels deep. Which, um, which also addresses the induced demand, because unless yes. everyone in the entire planet moved to LA. Right. We're pretty sure everyone is not going to move to LA. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, yeah. Not all at once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and then there, with those, uh, you know, we should have like big, a few stations would be bigger, like maybe at LAX, um, where you've got a single port, like a, an airport or a seaport you'd see um, a larger station, um, and, uh, and then that would, those would all go and, and, and uh, drop people off very close to their home or work. Yeah, it's really based on land availability. Right? If you're in a yeah. very urban area, you put, make small stations. If you're in a, you can make larger others. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah so. <laughs> That's a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's, there's also a bunch of questions that we'll have, I think, from um, the audience and from social media and that kind of thing. Uh, but these are commonly the questions that we will get. It's like, uh, will we run into utilities? Um, no, because we are below the utilities. So the, the, the level, the depth of the tunnel is, is below all of the plumbing and utilities. Um, you know, uh, when, once you get below about 20 or 30 feet, there's almost nothing. Yeah. Um, there's not even, you know, no moles or sort of <laughs> very few earthworms. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just, just rock, basically. <laughs> Um, a, a cool rule of thumb is that if your two tunnel diameters below the surface, noise and vibe are imperceptible. So our boring diameter is 14 feet, so times two is 28. We usually round up to 30. And so we're pretty much always a minimum of 30 feet below the surface, sometimes 40, sometimes 50, but always a minimum of 30, just so we don't disturb anyone. Yeah, it's, it's whatever, whatever the depth is that's necessary to ensure that we do not uh, run into anything. Um, and then are we, will we be using the test tunnels for public transit? Uh, we're using them to get feedback from the public and figure out how to make it a, an amazing experience. Um, and I guess technically somebody could go from one, you would start off in one place and end up in another. Um, but it wouldn't be, it would be more for, uh, for interest sake that I think people would take it. Yeah. Um, as and, opposed to, and to give us feedback. Yeah, yeah exactly, give us feedback. Yeah. Um, so and we're, we're prioritizing, so the commitment we've made is like we're always going to prioritize pods that carry pedestrians and cyclists. Um, that'll be uh, you know, a nice sort of higher density pod. Um, and uh, yeah, it seems like that's probably the right thing to do. Um, and then earthquakes is probably the single biggest question we get. Um, and people don't realize that like earthquakes are primarily a surface phenomenon. They're like, like waves on the ocean. And if so, if you're in a tunnel, it's like being in a submarine in the ocean. There could be a hurricane on the surface, but in the submarine, everything is quiet and smooth. Um, and that's actually how it is for tunnels. And when there have been major earthquakes, um, such as the, there was a Mexico City earthquake, I yeah. believe, they used the tunnels for evacuation. Because uh, all the roads were, were, were disrupted and... Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. You know, the the two, two cool factoids about the earthquake, the safest place to be in an earthquake is in a tunnel. Yeah. And so w LA was just hit with the, I think it was 5.3 or 5.6 earthquake, and our office trailers were, were rocked, as I assume everyone else was, and the people in the tunnel who were working did not know an earthquake had occurred. Um, and a way to think about it from a physical standpoint is if a tsunami hits you, where do you want to be? Yeah. You don't want to be at the surface, you want to be, if you somehow could be at the bottom of the ocean where you would not feel it at all. So no, it's, it's a very big misconception, but earthquakes um, and they're designed for seismic loading is standard for, for any tunnel design, especially in this area. Metro does it, we do it. Yeah, um, it, it wouldn't be possible to have a subway tunnel in LA, exactly. which a lot of people do not realize exists, but uh, there is a subway in LA. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but it would not, if, if earthquakes were really were dangerous, there's no way that a subway in LA would be approved. Yeah. Same, um, same with Japan. Yeah, yeah. Lots, lots of subways. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Japan is very seismically active and has uh, one of the best subways in the world. Yeah. Um, uh, sinkholes. Uh, yeah, I think would we agree that if, if you could actually detect any if, with with any instrument yeah. detect that there's been a ground movement, we will take corrective action and then ask you for what that instrument was. <laughs> uh, because it's, it's really, you, there will be no change in, no, no sinkholes, no nothing. Yeah, and we, we actually is, um, if, if you're ever driving on 120th Street in Hawthorne, you'll see these little uh, prisms on the road. Um, and we actually put them there, and we have an autonomous system monitoring the settlement of the road. And if it ever goes above a 20th of an inch, which I think it maybe has happened, it might even be zero times, it almost never happens, uh, the entire company gets an email and people stop. Uh, so we, we over look at this because obviously that would be something that would not be good. So we monitor this and um, very closely, as all, all, you know, the LA Metro do the same thing and we've seen great numbers. I mean, it has, it has zero yeah. effect. It's it, like, it does. Yeah. Like you dig, dig the tunnel, you put in super strong reinforcing segments yeah. um, and those maintain the, the diameter that you've, you've cut out of the ground and there is no, there's no volume change. Yeah. And so as a result, sinkholes are not a factor. Yeah. Um, our, our tunnels are, we'll just basically go um, below the metro tunnels, so there will not be any, any interference with the LA subway system. Um, we talked about uh, CEQA. Um, we we uh, absolutely will be doing an environmental impact report for the larger system. Um, and we have, as Steve was saying, done a, a very comprehensive report in the request for exemption. Um, Which is public, it's, it's online. Yeah, this is like good bedtime reading. Um, <laughs> 16. 16 pages? 16, 15 to 16, yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is, um, so, you know, we think it's like a, probably a fair thing to do, and, and it, it will allow us to get this done sooner than might otherwise be the case, because it, we, we can resolve a lot of questions with the, the, essentially the, the research and public feedback tunnels. Yeah. And then we talked about induced demand. Cool. So. Um, and you know, we sort of use a lot of people. Uh, that are at the Boring Company are ex-SpaceX uh, or, or even current SpaceX people. Um, like Steve is one of the um, first people uh, to join SpaceX. Um, it's like thank you for the job. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> um, <laughs> like like two, 2003. Wow, 2003. Yeah. Damn. No, number nine right now. Wow. Uh. Okay. Um, well, thanks for everything you've done. You're, you're number three, I believe. What the? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, we have a lot of SpaceX engineers um, that, that are uh, either kind of working at SpaceX and the Boring Company or full-time at the Boring Company. And um, so we, we get to um, use rocket technology to build tunnels or, um, and, and, and apply um, some pretty advanced techniques to, to create to tunnel technology, which hasn't generally gotten a lot of love. So we're, we're really... Um, taking world-class engineering talents, applying it to this problem, and seeing if we can make some headway. And at SpaceX, we were able to um, go from uh, basically an empty warehouse in El Segundo um, in 2003 to the Falcon Heavy launch this year. Uh, we were able to land two boosters uh, at, Cape, at Cape Canaveral. The, the center port hit the ocean, but we know how to solve that. Um, and then, um, and then uh, as a demonstration, sent a uh, my old roadster to uh, the asteroid belt. Um, and, you know, it's like more interesting than launching a block of concrete. Um, so. So, you know, 
we did that because like no, normally when rocket companies launch something, they launch something boring like a block of concrete. And like, what's the least boring thing we could do? Um, and ironically, hmm, boring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, you know, so I think if, if a team of people who did what you saw there, then if some of that, some of those resources were applied to personalized mass transit, then you know, could have. There's the potential for for significant uh, breakthrough, um, but obviously that can, that can only happen with public support, and and so hope um, that uh, if we can ask for your support, that would be great. I really appreciate it. So yeah, I'd really like to, to thank everyone involved. I've worked with the, the cities a lot, um, Councilmember Kretz in particular, uh, community members, the Temple, um, and LA Metro, and we're really trying to make sure all the stakeholders are involved, and um, and that we get as much feedback as possible, um, and and do something.